I'm going to finish up something from last time real quick. And uh, then we'll take the quiz. Remember, we all remember the quiz, right? And uh, then we'll uh, start something new. Okay, so just real briefly, last time we were talking about charging and discharging. We were, and for conductors, we talked about charging and discharging by contact. And there's another method for charging a conductor, which is called charging by induction. Inducing a charge. And I was wanted to actually try a demo, but I actually couldn't get it to work, so we'll just have to talk about it. Uh, but charging by induction basically means you don't have to put something in contact. Let's say you have a uh, an object that already has a, a charge on it, let's say a positive charge. And you start off with a neutral conductor, and then so you have some neutral conductor over here. Let's make it kind of longish. And you bring the neutral conductor near this positive charge. And what happens to it? It's a metal conductor. So if you bring it near a positive charge, what's going to happen? What do you mean by equalize? Okay, it, it say again. So the charge comes from nowhere. It starts off with a zero charge and then gains a positive charge, even though it's not in contact. Loses negative charges. They're not. They're not in contact, right? These are these uh, two conductors are not touching each other. So there's no conductive path for mobile electrons to travel from one to the other. But you've brought it in the presence of some charged object. So what's going to happen to the mobile electron C? It's going to polarize. Okay, that's the magic word. That's the magic word I was looking for, polarization, right? So what happens on this end? What do I draw? It becomes more negative, right? But what happens on the other end? It becomes more positive, okay? The total charge is still zero, right? We haven't actually put any net charge on this thing. We've just created a polarization. But what if I could then do this? I Say I then split this thing in two. Somehow I have maybe some insulating grips so I don't have any charge leaking, and I just cut the thing in half. And now what have I created? I've got one object that does have a net negative charge, and the other object that now has a net positive charge, right? I bring, take away the uh, original conductor and separate these two things, and now you have a case where there is a net charge on one, an opposite net charge on the other, but the total charge, uh, if you add up the total charge of the system, it stays the same, okay? So this is the way you could actually, if you wanted some object and you had two things that were in contact and you can separate them, you can induce a charge by just bringing it near uh, some other char charged object and then sort of physically separating the two ends, the two polarized ends to have two charged objects that left over. This is charging by induction. Okay, so you might have may run into this. You might have a question on this for uh, for homework. Okay, uh, and that's pretty much all I want to talk about for chapter 15 stuff on conductors, insulators, charging, and so forth. Questions before we do the quiz? All right, let's do the quiz. It is it should be short. But that doesn't mean you shouldn't think carefully. So think carefully. We have a glass sphere right here, has a uniform positive charge on the surface, and it's brought near a neutral block of metal. Okay, so here's the metal, and point A is inside the metal block. What is the direction of the electric field at point A due only to charges on the surface of the block? Think carefully. Direction of the electric field at point A due only to the charges on the surface of the block. Okay, answer number three is correct. Okay, so we have a majority rule on here. It's still not perfect, but three is correct. And the key idea here is that 
What is what exactly is the question asking for? It's not asking for the net electric field. The net electric field inside that metal at that equilibrium is zero. Okay. It's not actually asking for the electric field due to the the applied electric field due to the positive charges on the sphere. That would be seven, right? It's asking for the electric field due to charges on the block. You say, well, that's neutral. Are there? How can there be any charges on the block? Well, what do we just get done saying? Here's a positive charge, and you bring a neutral metal near it, and the electron C shifts, and so there's a polarization. And what do we get on this surface? Negatives. And on the other surface, positive. Okay. So you treat it like superposition, right? Superposition of two different of two different fields due to two different two different sources. One source is the original electric field due to the uh, the sphere, and that's pointing away from the positive charged sphere, so that's E of the sphere. But now because of the polarization, we have charges on the surface here. These positive charges make a field pointing away from them. These negative charges make a field pointing towards them. So they both add up to a electric field due to surface charge on metal. That points in the opposite direction. And when you add them both together, we have to end up with, with zero, right? But the field just due to those surface charges is pointing in direction three, okay? Okay, so this was pretty good. Still some people having a few issues with this, but this is something you're going to have to know. Uh, I can, there's some questions on this for homework. Uh, I think you've had some already, too. And I can almost guarantee something like this is going to show up on a test. So, so if you don't know this, study it. Understand it as soon as you can. Okay? Questions?